Welcome to Railroad Corporation, a brand new tycoon management game arriving into early access on Steam this May 27th. Produced by Corby Games and published by Iceberg Interactive. Today, we're excited to share for the first time some in-depth gameplay and talk through how you'll create and manage a vast business empire extending across the United States during the golden age of Steam. Trains are obviously the heart of your business, but far from its extent. You'll need to influence local settlements, lobby politicians, and play the stock market to stay ahead of your rivals. What you're seeing is our current development build, so there are some visual improvements we're already working on and bugs you might see that we're planning to fix. When we start a new game, we'll go through a short tutorial to learn the basics. Our very first objective is to get a shipment of grain from the farm in Piedmont to Baltimore. We can see what a settlement wants to buy and has to sell from these icons. But before that can happen, we'll need to construct a route between the settlements and purchase our first train. When laying new tracks, we need to consider the landscape we want to cross. Soil type, elevation, and geographical features such as this river will all impact the total cost. We can either just connect the two locations directly or get more involved to avoid paying more than we have to. All right, now we've got our tracks in place, let's go ahead and buy our very first steam engine. You'll be able to research and buy five engines when Railroad Corporation arrives in early access, with many more to come alongside the full release. Every locomotive has a maximum pulling mass, speed, and mileage, along with other important traits such as upkeep costs. By clicking on our locomotive, we can now assign its route and what locations we wanted to pick things up from and where to drop them off. Let's get some of this grain from Piedmont, then deliver it to Baltimore. Resources all weigh something, so we can't take on all of the grain the farm has to give with this train, but let's take what we can and get going. You'll see we automatically attach the right cars for the resource we're transporting, and the stronger engines later in the game will be able to pull much longer trains. Later on, we'll also be able to store resources in our own warehouses, and by expanding our network, we'll get to weigh up which settlements are going to offer us the best deals for trading with them. Okay, we've delivered some grain, and now we've got two more objectives. First, we've got some passengers to get from Cumberland, and some wood to collect from Frederick. As before, let's lay some tracks, and assign what we want our train to pick up, and where it's going. In fact, let's invest in a second train now, just to speed things up. We can also make time move faster with these controls here. Prices for goods will vary based on supply and demand, so you'll need to keep your eyes open and anticipate the market. Now that we've finished the tutorial, the real game can begin. To start out, we're not actually running our own railroad corporation. We have to learn the ropes by working for someone else. We can choose between three companies, and each has their own perk that will make the game a bit different. Money is always useful, so let's work for Picket Railroads and get $12,000 at the beginning of each mission. In Railroad Corporation, you'll need to work on a whole network of supply and demand. There are dozens of different resources in the world. Some you'll need to combine into others, so for example, our first mission requires us to deliver steel to Cincinnati. But in order to do that, we're going to need to locate a steel mill and deliver the resources it needs to make steel in the first place. It's also important to consider that our locomotives will break down over time, so let's upgrade this station to include a repair shop to get our engines in tip-top condition. If one of our trains was ever to break down, it would block the network and prevent other trains from passing through. Trains will wait for the line to be clear, so it's also important to consider this when planning multiple trains on multiple routes, and to think ahead so you ensure there's always alternative ways through. You'll see this mission is much larger than the tutorial and could take us a few hours to fully complete. Missions are driven by historical scenarios, so there's no randomizing of layout or resources. Each one is its own challenge to be discovered and overcome. As you progress in your company, you'll be given more and more responsibility, running more departments, constructing your own buildings, even signing your own contracts and setting your own goals. Whenever you complete an objective, you'll earn experience points, which you can spend between missions on your portfolio or permanent business-wide upgrades. As we saw with the repair shop, the buildings you own can also be upgraded and expanded in lots of ways. Let's take a look at our office. Here we can upgrade to add a research and development department. In the research tree, we can allocate our scientists to work on a variety of projects, from our train's speed, power, and strength to their lifespan, efficiency, and reliability, as well as entirely new models of locomotive to buy. 
The more scientists we allocate to a project, the faster it'll go. And we'll open up new projects the further we get into the game. Our office can be upgraded with lots of different departments as we progress. An HR department, for example, will allow us to hire some employees. The labor exchange has a limited selection of people we can hire for every mission, and each one has a cost to bring on board and an ongoing monthly salary. In return, these heroes will give our company some special bonuses. If we want to, we can fire them too, although they won't appear back in the job market right away, so we should make that choice carefully. Our lobbyist department works similarly to our research department. Only here we can assign lobbyists to work on getting laws passed that benefit our company and hinder our competition. Laws will last for a set amount of time, so you'll need to take them or their possibility into account when you're making plans. Looking for some human competition? You're in luck! One of the most exciting features of the game is its multiplayer mode, which will launch in beta alongside Railroad Corporation in May 2019. In multiplayer, you and a friend will compete online in real time racing to be the first to a net value of half a million dollars. Thanks for watching. You can wishlist Railroad Corporation on Steam to stay up to date with all our news and updates, and talk to us on Twitter, Facebook, or Discord. We can't wait to show you more of the game when it becomes available through early access on May 27, 2019.